For many people, coping with diabetes also means coping with depression. If this sounds familiar, you're not alone, and there's a lot that can be done to help. Most prepared breakfast sausages out there are full of sodium and preservatives and probably not the best way to start off your day. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make some savory turkey sausage patties that are all natural and have a nice spicy kick. Plus, we'll check in with the members of the Extreme Diabetes Makeover Team in San Diego and see how they're faring in their struggle for diabetes control. Welcome to D-Life. I'm Benno Schmidt. And I'm Mother Love. Okay, I have a confession to make. Sometimes my diabetes gives me the blues, or as the medical profession calls it, depression. I have felt that myself, Mother Love, and I never really connected mental health to diabetes. But once I investigated it, I realized it's all part of the same package, and there is a lot medical science can do to make us feel better. Dr. Paul Chinovsky is a leading expert on diabetes and mental health and we visited him in Seattle, Washington. Dr. Paul, as he's known to his patients and colleagues, is so committed to the idea that diabetes and depression are interconnected that he's coined a term for it, diapression. Diapression is this idea that in people with diabetes, depression manifests differently than in people that don't have diabetes. Dr. Paul started his career as a family doctor. And I love that work, but I always had an interest in psychiatry. I love people's stories. One of these stories belongs to Eileen Springer, a retired school teacher living just outside Seattle. I started out as gestational diabetic 30 years ago when I was pregnant the last trimester with my first child. Three years later, she was diagnosed with type 1, and with it, came the first subtle symptoms of depression. I was a busy mom, and that was hard, trying to juggle everything. And I knew I was in denial, but I knew I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do to take care of me. Fast forward to 2007. Just as the last child was leaving home, Eileen's life took a tragic turn when her husband of 32 years was killed in a motorcycle accident. When I started seeing Eileen, her whole world had fallen apart and she'd stopped eating. She was lying in bed. She just shut down. I didn't leave the house. I became a recluse. I wasn't involved with other people. All I knew is I was depressed. There was no parallel to the diabetes with the depression for me. Nobody said anything to me about the diabetes and the depression were linked together until I met Dr. Paul. It's twice as common in people with diabetes as in the general population. Part of it is just what you have to do from day to day. And often when people get overwhelmed, something has to stop being done, and often it's the diabetes. The depression comes on, and you have choices to make with the diabetes, and there were times that I didn't take care of it. Some of the first symptoms that people present with is that their blood sugars are out of control, and they start to feel bad. Studies have shown that when people with diabetes have depression, all of those things are amplified. That's when a free-falling downward spiral can take hold. When the spiral starts with the depression, everything kind of goes out the window. The covers go up over the head, the shades get drawn, um, and for me, I didn't take care of me. I, did, I checked my blood, but not as often as I should. I didn't make the right choices. Sometimes they won't even come to the healthcare provider because everything's out of control. They may have even gotten to the point of giving up on taking their insulin or taking their medications or monitoring their glucose. Making matters worse, today's society still casts an unkind eye toward depression. Even in the age of Oprah where, you know, you can turn on the television and people are talking about everything these days, even in that setting, there's still a lot of stigma and shame about depression. There is a stigma to it. You don't want people to know that you're depressed. People feel vulnerable, 
feel like they have a weakness of some kind. Dr. Paul's first step in treating depression is one-on-one -on -one counseling. And you make these decisions and it really makes a huge difference in your life because you start to feel better and you start to break that cycle. Prescription antidepressants can also be an enormous help. Dr. Paul also suggests reaching out to people who've been down the same road. It's important for us to have that discussion about being open about their, their depression symptoms and being able to talk to people or finding supports who've had similar symptoms. My family keeps me going. My support of my close friends keep me going. They help me through the depression. I'm blessed to have friends to help me with that. But that's only because I've shared with them. You know, Eileen has done a, a tremendous amount of work. She's always trying so hard and she's successful. It's been really a delight to work with her and the results are paying off. I think for other diabetics that have depression or they think they have depression, get help. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to try different doctors. You're in control of your life. You get to make the choices and you don't have to live with the depression. Things can get better. For additional information about depression, visit dlife.com. When we come back, we'll check in with the Extreme Diabetes Makeover Team for more on the emotional impact of diabetes. Welcome back to DLife. In 2010, the organization called TCOYD, which is short for Taking Control of Your Diabetes, developed a unique program to help a group of patients finally get themselves under control. Now what the program did was paired seven patients with a team of five experts from a variety of diabetes related fields for five months. Let's take a look now at some of their stories. The Extreme Diabetes Makeover Team knows that diabetes isn't just a physical disease, it's also a psychological one. Psychologist Dr. William Polanski took a special interest in XDM participants Renee and Duran. My name is Duran Howard, and I was diagnosed with diabetes three years ago. Depression is a demon that Duran has always faced, and it got even worse when he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I used to lay in bed sometime and just say, just diabetes, hurry up and kill me and get it over with. 20% or more of folks with diabetes right now would meet our professional criteria for having a pretty significant depressive disorder. Life isn't easy for Duran. He wakes up before dawn to work at a shipyard. He lives in a homeless shelter, battles drug addiction, and is the father of three children from different relationships. I didn't want to let Duran into the program. How is a homeless guy going to comply with the intense regimen that we're going to impose upon him. Are you taking your insulin as regular as you can? Uh, this past week I hadn't been, but up until then I have been. My name is Renee Stanton. I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1987. Renee's psychological battle with diabetes comes in the form of self-blame and guilt. I always thought if I continued to do the right thing all the time, I'll never have to take insulin. So if the word insulin came up, I was looking at it as if I was a failure. In the beginning, we put her on Bieta. Okay, I took my 20 minute Bieta. And this apple will make do. She lost 18 pounds, her blood sugars got better, but they're still not even close to where we want to see them. Renee needed insulin. But first, the dream team needed to clear up her misconceptions. Most people really want to avoid taking insulin if they have type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Our goal is for you to live such a long and healthy life that you will take insulin. Oh. It's simply a, one of our best medications that can help you get where you want to go. I took the insulin, woke up at 3 a.m. because I was so excited to see my blood sugar, and it was... Um, 176, so yay, it was coming down because normally it's up in the 200s or so. So I couldn't wait to go back to bed, to wake up in the morning and take it again. So that morning I woke up, took my blood sugar, and it was 208. I was very disappointed. 
very psychologically. You got to go back to it's not your fault. We just got to find the right dosage. So I'm sure they will fix this. Both Duran and Renee had to change their attitudes before they could make progress. For Renee, that meant feeling less ashamed about her diabetes. I don't tell a lot of people I have um, diabetes. That's something that I'm deep down inside hiding or... If you feel like somehow this disease is all your fault and you're a bad person, mm. that then can lead to you taking poor care of yourself. Mm. And so we want to stand up and shout from the rooftops and say it over and over again, this is not your fault. For Renee, the point was made. I came out here to the beach because I was a little sad earlier and I wanted to retake the tape and let you know that if you think positive, get out in the sunshine, you'll find that things will and do have a way of working out. I'm okay, you see, no more tears. All right, <laughs> it's sunshine, yay! Duran also made great strides with some counseling. I'm checking my blood sugar at least four times a day. Wow. I notice this attitude, which is exciting for me. It's my son again. But just as suddenly, Duran's willpower flagged. Dr. Elman called Duran the other evening. He, he didn't answer. And he called to cancel it. We haven't heard from him for almost two weeks. Duran just didn't come and didn't call, and we haven't heard from him since. Duran ultimately found his way back to the XDM program and resolved to finally get his diabetes under control. I'm gonna go up, down, up and down those stairs, get a little, get a little cardio in. Um, no time like the present to get started. For both Duran and Renee, controlling their diabetes meant controlling their psychological health. Since overcoming his depression, Duran has found a new job in property management and has moved out of the homeless shelter. It's a struggle with diabetes. You have to change your lifestyle. And I became really depressed about that because I thought that I couldn't do it, but I know that I can. Renee will also face more life obstacles along the way. But with the help of the Extreme Diabetes Makeover team, her decision to accept insulin therapy will pay huge health dividends for the rest of her life. It's a change of behavior that I need to do. It's things I should have been doing anyway. So being in this program is positive for me, and I think I'm going to gain a lot. If you'd like to see the whole Extreme Diabetes Makeover series, log on to tcoid.org. When we come back, Chef Michelle gives your breakfast an extreme makeover. Hi, I'm Chef Michelle Nishan, and welcome to the D-Life Kitchen. Now, when you think of breakfast sausage, I bet you think of packages of prepared links and patties that you get at the grocery store. I think you'll be surprised at how easy and how much healthier it is to make them at home. So let's do that by starting with ground turkey. So what we're gonna do is take some dried spices. We have some marjoram. We have some mustard powder, a little bit of allspice. I have some nutmeg some crushed chili peppers because I like it a little bit on the spicy side, and some dried sage. We're also gonna use a little bit of sea salt. I love to use sea salt and some freshly milled black pepper. And again, I love to use freshly milled black pepper because it tastes so much better than the stuff that's already been pre-ground and often is a few months old and can be quite stale. Now first, you can see every once in a while a couple lumps of mustard or something like that. So you wanna break that up before you add a little bit of warm water, and I'm taking a little bit of grapeseed oil, I'm gonna mix it well, and now I'm gonna add the ground turkey. And just really kind of dig in here with a wooden spoon or a plastic spoon, whatever you want, and really gonna mix this well. Now you can see that the sausage here is a little bit on the soft side, so what I love to do is actually put it in the fridge, cover it with plastic, and let it sit overnight so that it can firm up. And you can see that when we do that, the sausage is gonna be much firmer. And also the flavors have an opportunity to really permeate the meat. So when I smell this, it smells like breakfast sausage. Really awesome. So what I'm gonna do is basically take a spoon 
and you can see that these are just perfect for forming patties, ready to rock. And I have a preheated nonstick skillet here. Turkey is very lean, so it can be a little bit on the dry side. You add the oil, and it actually adds a little bit of fat so that you have a, a moist finished product. But also, you can cook them without adding any fat to the pan because there's oil in there. Time to turn them over. Now look at that beautiful golden brown. Now it's important that you give the sausages four to five minutes on each side. This is poultry, so you wanna make sure that it's cooked through to an internal temperature of about 165 degrees. So we're gonna give it just a few more minutes on this side and then we're gonna be ready to plate. Now those feel perfectly cooked, so I'm gonna plate them, but let's take this dish a little bit further. What is a good sausage breakfast without a couple of really great scrambled eggs? And I have a couple of eggs here that I've pre-scrambled. Just gonna add a little bit of salt, a couple of mils of freshly cracked pepper, give it a good mix, add just a little bit of grapeseed oil. The pan has cooled down, now watch what happens here. You'll see that the eggs are already starting to cook. I'm gonna move them around. And you can see that what I've done is kind of lifted the pan off, put the pan back on, and look at that. These are nice and beautiful and moist. And here's the deal. Eggs are like the perfect protein. 90% of the nutrients of an egg are in the yolk. And it's been proven long ago that it's serum cholesterol that gives us problems with high cholesterol count, not dietary cholesterol. So those of you who keep throwing away the yolks, stop. They're too delicious and very, very good for you. And also breakfast is a, a really important time to have protein to start your day off right. So here we have a couple of nice scrambled eggs, turkey sausage, what could be more delicious and what could be more easy. Now you can find this recipe and thousands more like it at dlife.com slash recipe box. Try this one out this week and then be sure to come back. Visit the website, give it a review. I'm Chef Michelle Nishan. See you next time in the D-Life Kitchen. Thanks, Michelle. Up next on D-Life, Camp Mahita, one of the few places where having diabetes is normal. Welcome back. In the countryside of western New Jersey, there's a remarkable place where kids with diabetes can lower their guard, relax, tell stories, enjoy outdoor sports, make friends, and basically feel normal for a few weeks every summer. Welcome to Camp Nahida. Sabrina Rubinsky, on the left, so has type 1 diabetes. Her older sister, Jackie, does not. Camp is really our second home. Camp Nahida didn't feel like home when they started coming here 12 years ago. I was in shock uh, coming to camp and um, seeing that I wasn't the only one testing my blood sugar six times a day. I did not love coming to camp at first because I was the only one without diabetes. Nahida is an acronym. It stands for the New Jersey Diabetes Association. At camp, Jackie learned there are millions of kids with diabetes fighting a lonely battle, just like her sister. I didn't want to have diabetes. I just wanted to ignore it just like everyone else. I wanted to just go to my locker, grab my lunch, and go to the cafeteria and eat like everyone else did. I didn't want to take a stop at the nurse. Now, as Camp Nahida staffers, Sabrina and Jackie help 80 campers a week share a new world. Nobody in my school has diabetes. I'm the only person, so it feels a little different. There's nothing to hide, no secrets about it. You don't have to worry about your tubing showing or taking a shot or something like that. You can just be free. I feel like I could talk to them like more openly and like I could just tell them anything. Sabrina came to Camp Nahida with her support system, Jackie and their mother, Barbara, who worked there as a nurse. Their attention could be suffocating at times. But Jackie and Barbara also learned powerful lessons at Nahida. I just felt when I looked out and saw 80 kids with diabetes, it was so emotional to me. I just was, um, it was overwhelming, it still is. I have made um, nurse friends that, you know, their children have diabetes. I didn't have that back home, that they understand what I'm feeling. The first year I was here, all I did was cry. For a parent, Barbara Rabinsky says the crying never really stops. It's a lifetime disease, so you don't know what's around the next corner, so you want them to take really good care of themselves. 
Sabrina says she and her mother first learned to count carbs at Camp Nahida, among other things. So I learned where to put my pump sites, you know, my leg, my hips, my butt, my arm. All their friends try something new, so they're going to try a new pump site. You know, their friends are checking new fingers, they're going to check a new finger. Jackie Rabinsky only hopes to inspire children the way these campers touched her. She's studying to teach elementary school with a focus, of course, on students with special needs. We have a tradition here where we light an N. Uh, on the last night, all the kids have a candle and they sit quietly by the lake, and then the campers have a chance to stand up and talk about what this two weeks meant for them and their diabetes and emotionally, and a lot of them cry. The rest of them last In 2011, a new and expanded health Thank center you. will allow Camp Nahida to open its world when it's cold outside making it one of only six year-round facilities in the United States. It's helped me live with it. I can know I'm not alone. Oh, well, I feel this way. I can call my friend from camp. Whereas some people that don't come here, just they keep feeling alone. Don't go away. D-Life will be right back. Want more D-Life? You know you do. Find DLife TV segments, recipes, and so much more at DLife.com and on the DLife iPhone app. And don't forget to send us your comments and story ideas. We read everything and we always want to know what's on your mind. Well, that's it for this edition of DLife. Thanks for joining us. And remember, tomorrow is a new Diabetes Day. We'll see you next week for more information, inspiration, and connection.